now move on to the Minister for uh, Employment and Learning. And again, we start with topical questions, and I call George Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, can the Minister state whether he will fully fund the BA Commercial Pilot Training Degree for Northern Ireland students, uh, which was the situation with a constituent of mine recently? Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. It's a matter he's been in correspondence uh, with myself and my officials on. Um, the member will appreciate that um, we do fund uh, courses uh, within uh, the UK, but whenever we have a situation where part of a course is funded uh, or, or takes place outside the UK, there's a different funding regime in place uh, for that. The overall uh, student support settlement, uh, as agreed by the executive, is now in place uh, through to 2015, so, though we can, of course, look at changes thereafter in that regard. I call George Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can the Minister give me an assurance that he will pursue equality of funding with the rest of the United Kingdom to, pre to prevent further disparity for Northern Ireland students? Um, again, what I would say to the member is that there are a number of areas where there are disparities uh, between the student support regime as applies in Northern Ireland and in other parts of the UK. But perhaps the biggest uh, disparity is the fact that we've actually uh, frozen uh, tuition fees at £3,500, whereas in other parts they've gone for fees up to 9000 So there is a fixed amount of money available to us as an executive, and choices have to be, to be made in that regard between what we can do in terms of, of some of the other elements of student um, support. Of course, we can look at all of these issues in the future, and um, in the, the, the context where more resources are available to us, then we can actually drive out more and more of the anomalies that do exist. I call Bar Barry McElduff. Uh, can I ask the Minister uh, about his recent skills mission to the United States of America? I understand that he met companies in New York, Washington and Chicago, but could the Minister maybe detail what support is available for companies which choose to invest here from his department as distinct from Detty? Uh, I thank the member for his question, and it's a, a very appropriate uh, question to, to, be, to be asking. Though I, I would stress we're uh, discussing assured skills later on under the, the, the formal uh, questions. But in, in essence, um, my department does work in conjunction with Invest Northern Ireland, and we have a very good uh, re relationship. More and more of the investments that are coming into Northern Ireland are being attracted based upon the existing skills of our workforce and also our potential to invest further in skills. And that's why we have the Shared skills uh, program. So a, a core part of our trip to the United States was talking to some of our existing investors to make sure that things are going well for them, and also talking to potential future investors into Northern Ireland and showing to them the very bespoke, uh, bespoke approach that we have to investing in skills, which is something that does give Northern Ireland a major competitive advantage in terms of attracting investment at present. I call Barry McElduff. Can I ask the Minister, following on from the US mission, are any follow-ups or further visits of that nature planned, maybe perhaps to other countries? Um, well, at this stage, there are no formal trips that are diaried um, at, at present, though, of course, I do anticipate uh, that there would be some follow-up um, missions, whether it's to the, the United States or to other parts of the world, to further showcase our, our skills. There were a, a large number of leads that we did uncover in our trip to the United States, not just in terms of engaging with companies, but also with, with government. Uh, and it is fair to say that uh, the United States government in particular remains very keen to assist Northern Ireland, and it's not just in terms of the political process, but also uh, economically. And there are opportunities, not just in terms of company support, but also in terms of exchanges uh, relating to individuals where they can focus more on their skills in terms of experiencing different types of business environments. I call Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister to provide any detail he can on the uh, recently announced uh, theatre as part of the Cirque College in Bangor? Um, well, I'm happy, happy to do so. I mean, this was something that was taken forward um, by my department, so it's something we've been very closely in, involved with. Members will recall that this was something that was mooted during the, the last assembly, uh, but for various reasons, um, my predecessors in the department uh, decided that they didn't have the resources uh, to take the, the, the matter forward. Uh, we have... Uh, 
revisited uh, the, the, the situation and identified um, the capital resources available for it. And I'm very pleased to say that we have been able to make this uh, important investment, uh, which is good not just uh, for Bangor and the, and the wider Cirque catchment area, but also for all of Northern Ireland. We are investing in the future uh, of our economy, particularly in the creative industries, and we all know that is a, an important growth sector. But it's also hopefully of benefit to the town of Bangor as well, because they have been looking uh, for a theatre um, for, for many years. And as part of this development, uh, there will be a 350-seat theatre available. And while it is formerly part of, of CERC uh, and there primarily for the use of students, uh, the college will be making it available uh, for the, the use of the community. I call Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer and indeed welcome the investment in, in Bangor, specifically in a theatre which, as he mentioned, has been long acquired. Can I ask um, what engagement did happen with other community groups to ensure um, that they can make use to it and it isn't solely a, a CERC facility but a benefit to the wider community and meets the community specification? Uh, again, that's a, a useful uh, issue to, to explore. This is something that uh, is going to be taken forward uh, over the, the coming months. First of all, this is something we expect uh, to be delivered in a f fairly short uh, time frame. And uh, there is a prospect of construction beginning early in 2014, and we hope this will be open uh, during 2015. Um, as I stress, the, it is open for commercial bookings uh, via the college, and uh, the, the precise details of how that will operate will need to be taken forward by the college uh, themselves. But discussions are also taking place with North Down uh, Borough Council, um, who have uh, responsibilities in terms of the development of the arts scene uh, in, in that community. And it is for them to come to an arrangement with the college as to how they could best support and facilitate uh, the, the subsidising some of the more community-based uh, organisations accessing uh, the, the theatre uh, facilities. We would stress that those are dedicated theatre facilities and there the will be of, of proper standard uh, and it should be a very lucrative uh, venue uh, for a whole range of different types of, of organisations uh, and, uh, and the drama groups in particular. I call Anna Lou. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, can I ask the Minister if he could provide us uh, with an update uh, on his plans to review uh, careers. Uh, I thank the member uh, for her question. The careers policy is something that's held uh, jointly between my own department and the Department of, of Education. Uh, both John O'Dowd and myself are committed to a major uh, review of careers uh, in 2014. Um, at present, uh, the, the Committee for Employment and Learning are finalising their own uh, review of, of careers policy, and we very much look forward to uh, receiving that report. In the past, we have uh, systematically gone through the recommendations that have been made uh, by the Committee in, in relation to other reports, and no doubt we will wish to, to do the same uh, with the, the forthcoming uh, report. I call Anna Sorry. I thank the uh, Minister for, for his reply. Can I ask the Minister what he believes will be his main themes for this review? Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's fair to say that almost every time you have a, a, a deep conversation with the business community and indeed others around um, economic policy and skills, it more or less all the time goes back to the issue of careers as the foundation stone on, on, on which a good economy is built. I think one of the, the key outcomes that we'll want to see is ensuring that careers advice is much more in tune uh, with accurate labour market informa information. And while it, it is always for the individual to make their own decisions uh, around their future, those choices uh, should really be uh, informed uh, by the, the best information as to where emerging prospects do lie uh, with, within, within the economy, uh, so that people are fully aware of the, of the opportunities that are available uh, to them. In preparation for that, we are taking a, a number of, uh, of different actions and maybe take this opportunity to highlight the fact that um, we are placing our current careers advisors uh, in the industry at present. So we are encouraging companies to offer placements uh, to our careers advisors so they can actually spend some time with the companies and fully understand how they work and indeed um, the opportunities that will, will be there for not just young, peop young people, but everyone uh, in, in the future. And this is a, a good example as to how the, the public sector is working with business to ensure we're actually properly planning ahead for the future needs of the economy. I call Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, my 
uh, topical question is also on the career strategy. And I just want to ask the Minister, does he believe that it's appropriate that uh, career guidance is steered in the direction that he talked about um, based on the need of the employment markets? Again, I thank the member for a question that shows that careers are, are always uh, something that's very topical uh, and, that, and that members' uh, interest is, is very welcome in, in that regard. And I think, um, to answer her question, I think we do need to strike the appropriate balance in that regard. We do need to respect that ultimately people will make their own decisions for themselves. They have that, that autonomy and it's not for us to direct uh, people. But that said, um, it's important that we do encourage people by illustrating to them where the opportunities do lie. And uh, whether we're talking about the programme for government or the economic strategy, or indeed my own department's skills strategy, we have clearly set out where we expect our economy to grow in future years. We know the sectors that are set to expand, and those would include, for example, ICT, engineering, agri-food, the creative industries. So there's a wealth of opportunities out there for, for young people. And it's often a source of, of frustration whenever we have skills shortages or skill mismatches. So we have a situation where we have sometimes high levels of unemployment and at the same time employers suggesting that they can't get the people to fill certain vacancies uh, because people perhaps haven't chosen the right type of subjects or expressed an interest in, in certain careers. I call Paul Bradley for supplementary. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker and I thank the Minister for a very detailed answer and I suppose just to follow on from that if we could maybe just expand a little on how we make this more relevant to the needs of industry in general. Well, I think it's one where industry themselves uh, need to work much more uh, with the career service uh, and whatever future um, models we have in place to, to illustrate their needs. And I think the, the, the example we have of placing the career advisors with placements in the industry is a very good way of really copper fastening that type of, of, of cooperation. But Ultimately, what we're doing in careers has to be about servicing the economy, and that means servicing the needs of individual businesses and other, other organisations. I call Robin Newton. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be aware of the topical debate around the minimum wage versus the living wage uh, as, as is today. Could the Minister confirm how many companies uh, in Northern Ireland being aided uh, by his department are paying the living wage? Well, uh, I can't uh, give him a comprehensive answer on that particular point um, t today, um, and I, I imagine there may be difficulties in actually creating that information in any comprehensive uh, way in, in the short run uh, either. But what I could say to, to give him some uh, assurances is, first of all, we have spoken to the further education colleges and the universities, and um, they in, indeed um, are, are operating uh, on a, in a responsible manner in this regard. Um, the, the, we do pay the minimum wage in relation to um, apprenticeship su support, uh, and that is a reflection of the, the, the situation that pertains in, in, the, wider, uh, in the wider market. Um, overall, I think it's important that we are realistic uh, around all of this. Uh, the minimum wage uh, is something that is set at a UK-wide uh, level. It has been recently increased. Uh, I think there is a case for making further adjustments upwards in terms of, of the minimum wage. Um, in terms of, of, the, of, the, of the living wage ex itself, if we were to come in and to argue for artificially uh, setting a, a wage level much in excess of, of where the, the appropriate level would be for the national minimum wage, there could be unforeseen circumstances where we're actually denying opportunities uh, for um, employment or indeed for actually creating opportunities for, for skills and, and work experience uh, or apprenticeship op opportunities. So it's something we do need to take a, a very rounded, a, a balanced approach to. But obviously it's not something that's simply a matter for this Assembly, it's a matter to be addressed at the UK level too. I call Rob Newton for a supplementary. I thank the Minister uh, for his, his answer, and I, I think towards the end of it, he did indeed touch on my concerns that indeed, uh, and I accept that there would be areas uh, within the UK where the living wage may be just more appropriate as an incentive to attract people. And isn't it possible that uh, in that attraction that we would indeed start to lose those skilled employees that we have and who are perhaps on? A minimum wage are better quality candidates uh, and be attracted towards the living wage. 
Um, again, I would just re reinforce uh, with, with the member, it is something we do need to look very carefully at. And um, there will be different contexts in different parts of, of the UK. And um, clearly, th there are pressures, particularly in London and the South East, in terms of the, of the cost of living relative to what people are earning, that are, that are not quite as acute in Northern Ireland. But in saying that, I by no means diminish the, the very challenging circumstances that people uh, who are on the minimum wage often find themselves in. But um, it is important that we do have a focus on trying to create job opportunities for people and also training opportunities for people as well. Um, but where I think our ultimate focus has to be as an executive is in, is in creating job opportunities and also growing uh, and transforming our economy. And as we move up the productivity charts, we will see wage levels being driven up as well. The more we invest in skills, the more we will also drive up the, the average um, pay that's, uh, that pertains in, in our economy. So there are different ways in which we can actually drive up wages that are different from actually artificially setting a, 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 a wage floor. And that is the end of our period of topical questions.